This is example five with the first derivative test here. So we're going to uh, use the first derivative test to find all the local extrema of this function g of z equals z squared times natural log of z over four. So step zero, find the domain of the function f of x, or in this case g of z, but it doesn't matter what we call it. Um, so we want to find the domain first. Uh, so <clears throat> let's see, what do we have here? z squared. Um, nothing's wrong with that, you know, any value of z will work there. We can take any number and square it, that's okay. But here, natural log of z over 4. So, um, remember, one of the domain restrictions in general is uh, you can't take a log of 0 and you can't take a log of negative numbers. Um, so, in other words, anything you take a log of has to be strictly positive. So, um, and the base doesn't matter, right? It's a natural log, but the base of the log is totally irrelevant for domains. So here, uh, we're taking a log of z over 4. So z over 4 has to be strictly greater than 0, strictly positive. Um, so multiply both sides by 4, and you just get z is greater than 0. Right? So this is our domain here. z has to be greater than 0. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of this, and then just write that. So capital D for domain, and then uh, it's the interval from 0 to positive infinity, or in other words, just uh, z has to be strictly greater than 0. All right, so that's our domain. Now, um, that's step zero. You know, step zero. Step one now is find all the critical points of the function. So to find critical points, we take the derivative and uh, find out where's the derivative zero and where's the derivative undefined. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So g primed of z equals what? Well, notice uh, we have a product here, right? So we're going to have to do, this is our first function. This will be our second function. So we're going to do a product rule with these two guys here. So product rule says uh, the derivative is derivative of the first, which is 2z, times the second, which is just natural log of z over 4. All right. So that's derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now remember, derivative of natural log of a thing is 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. So, you know, it's, it's a chain rule thing here, right? z over 4 is a function, and it's sitting inside of another function, which is natural log. So function inside of a function means chain rule. Chain rule says uh, derivative of the big guy, evaluate the little guy, which is this, uh, 1 over this thing, z over 4, and then multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So the little guy is z over 4. So remember, uh, z over 4 is just 1 fourth times z, right? So its derivative is just a fourth. So we just multiply by 1 fourth, OK? So uh, just to recap that real quick, um, derivative of the first times the second, okay, derivative of the first times the second, plus uh, the first, which is e squared, times the derivative of the second. So this is a natural log of a thing. So its derivative is 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay. So that's what happened there. Um, now let's go ahead and simplify this. So uh, 2z times natural log of z over 4 plus z squared times, all right, uh, if we divide by z over 4, then we're multiplying by 4 over z, all right, and then we're still multiplying by 1 fourth here. So if you divide by a fraction, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So uh, anyway, 4 and a fourth cancel, and also z squared and z, so this one of these z squareds cancel with the z down here. So um, if we write what we have now, we have 2z times natural log of z over 4, then plus z. Okay, so um, here's a common factor of z. So 2 times z times natural log z over 4 plus z. So let's pull out this common factor of z here. z times uh, the quantity 2 natural log of z over 4 um, plus 1. So if we factor out z, we just have a 1 left here because it's 1 times z. Uh, okay, so then this is our derivative here in factored form. So we want to know when is this derivative 0, when is it undefined. First, let's talk about when it's undefined. Um, it's undefined when uh, the log is undefined, because that's the only thing we have to worry about. So z is OK, anything's fine there. 2 is 2, 1 is 1. Natural log is z over 4. Uh, z over 4 is just z over 4, anything's OK there. But here, um, natural log is z over 4. Remember, anything we take a log of has to be positive. So we want to know um, when's the derivative, g prime to z, which equals this now, when is that undefined? Well, it's going to be undefined if this log is undefined, and the log is undefined if z over 4 is less than or equal to 0. 
multiply both sides by 4 and you get z less than or equal to 0. So we actually have infinitely many values of z that make the derivative undefined. But, um, just like in example 4 actually, not a single one of these is in the domain. Okay? So remember, to be a critical point, you have to be in the domain of the original function. But um, here, z is greater than 0 uh, is our domain. And uh, we see here that uh, you know, if z is less than or equal to 0, then that's not, you know, not a single one of these points is in the domain. So we can actually just forget about these guys. So um, you know, another way to think of it is uh, the derivative is only undefined uh, basically at the same values of z where the original function is undefined. And you know, if the original function is undefined, then there's no sense talking about that. Um, we can't have critical points there. So anyway, um, so we don't have critical points when the derivative is undefined. So now we just want to know when is the derivative equal to 0. So we either have z equal to 0 or the other factor equal to 0. OK, so let's come up here and uh, mix you know, where we have some more room here. So either uh, z equals 0 or 2 natural log of z over 4 plus 1 is 0. So 2 times natural log of z over 4 and then uh, plus 1 equals 0. So z equals 0, uh, not a critical point because it's not in the domain, right? So z has to be strictly greater than 0 to be in the domain of the original function. So this is not a critical point, just toss it out. But what about this? What happens over here? So um, subtract 1 from both sides. So we have 2 times natural log of z over 4 uh, equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. So natural log of z over 4 equals negative 1 half. So here, for the next step, there's a couple different ways to think about it. You could uh, raise e to both sides, or you could say, OK, natural log of z over 4 equals negative 1 half. Uh, if I convert this to its exponential form, then it becomes uh, base e to the negative 1 half equals uh, z over 4. All right. So again, raise e to both sides, or just think of it, uh, convert this logarithmic equation to its equivalent exponential equation, and you'll just get the same thing either way. So here, e to the negative 1 half equals this. So that means uh, multiply both sides by 4, and then 4 e to the negative 1 half equals z. Remember, e to the negative 1 half, that's the same thing as saying 4 over e to the 1 half um, equals z. And remember, 1 half exponent is a square root. So this means, uh, let's write it like this now, z equals 4 over root e, which um, we want to know the approximate value for the next step. So this is approximately equal to uh, 2.4261. So you can toss that into your calculator, uh, and you'll end up with that. So anyway, this is our only critical point, right? Because it's the only valid value of z that makes the derivative 0. And we don't have any valid values where the derivative is undefined. Okay, Because um, remember, they weren't in the domain of the original function. So um, anyway, that was step 1. Find all the critical points. We only have one, actually, just the one. So now, uh, step two, make a sign chart for the derivative. Step two is make a sign chart. So we're kind of out of room here, so let's just erase all this and make some room. So 4 over root e was our critical point. Okay, so let's uh, make our sign chart here. And uh, always label the sign chart, right? So our derivative is g primed of z, so we're going to label the sign chart g primed. All right. And now uh, domain gets cut off at 0, so we'll put 0 on here and then forget about everything else over here. And um, our critical point was 4 over root e. So 4 over root e gets put over here. And remember, that was about 2.4261. Uh, OK, so um, that's step 2, make a sign chart. Um, step 3, determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. So step 3, we're just going to pick one number from each interval. So we have First interval is 0 to 4 over root e, and the second interval is 4 over root e to infinity. So we just pick one number from each of these two intervals. Um, in the first one, you know, we can pick 1 or 2 or some other crazy number, but let's just pick 1. So we get a new color here, and um, let's see, we're going to pick 1. So g primed of 1 equals, uh, let's see, let's go back, let's use... Um, this doesn't really matter, but let's use this form of the derivative here. 2z natural log of z over 4 plus z. So this is good. Or, you know, we could use the factored form. Let's use the factored form. Maybe that'll be a little bit simpler. So uh, it's going to be 1 times the quantity 2 natural log of 1 over 4 plus 1. 
So g prime to 1 is 1 times the quantity 2 natural log of 1 over 4 plus 1. So that simplifies kind of to uh, 2 times natural log of 1 fourth plus 1. So um, actually natural log of 1 fourth is a negative number. This is 2 times a negative number plus 1. So if you toss this into your calculator, you're going to see it's about equal to negative 1.97. Uh, yeah, which is less than 0. So g prime of 1 is negative, which means the derivative is negative in this entire interval here. All right. Now we pick one number from this interval over here, and uh, let's go ahead and pick 4. Okay, so really, you know, we could pick 3, we could pick 4, 5, 6, uh, we can even pick 2.5, but 4 is a good one to pick because um, what we have to do now is g prime of 4. All right. And if we do g prime of 4, then what are we going to have? Well, 4 times the quantity 2, natural log of 4 over 4. So that's why 4 is a good one to pick because of that, plus 1. So uh, it's going to be 4 times the quantity natural log of, or sorry, 2 natural log. Uh, don't forget the 2 there. Um, from this 2 here, don't forget that. So we're going to have 4 times the quantity 2, natural log of 4 over 4, uh, plus 1. So this is 4 times the quantity 2 times natural log of 1, plus 1. Uh, natural log of 1 is 0, right? So this is actually just uh, 4 times the quantity 2 times 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. So this is 4. But again, we don't care about the exact value. We just care that it's positive. So um, derivative is positive here in that whole interval. Um, OK, so uh, that was it for step 3 determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. So now step four, apply the first derivative test to find extrema. So if we apply the first derivative test, we look at this uh, sign chart and say, okay, negative derivative means decreasing function, positive derivative means increasing function. So uh, function decreases, function increases, or in other words, you know, negative derivative over here, positive derivative over here. So we have a local min right here. So when x, or when z, in this case, uh, the variable is z, when z equals four over root e, then the value of the function uh, g is, uh, or it's going to be local min. So now we want to know what is the actual value. So we take 4 over root e and we plug it into the original function to find out what the actual local min is. So we know where it is, you know, we know what happens at this value of z. Now we want to know what is the actual value. So remember, we're talking about local extrema of this function. So to find the value, we plug the z value, 4 over root e, into the original function. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll make some room here. So uh, the local min happens when z is 4 over root e. So what we want to find out is what is g of 4 over root e. All right, so g of z is z squared, natural log of z over 4. So this is going to be uh, 4 over root e, whole thing squared, times natural log of uh, 4 over root e, and then all divided by 4. So a little bit of some messy algebra here, but not too bad. So, all right, 4 over root e, if we square that, we get 16 over e. And then what happens here? Um, let's, 4 over root e, and then divided by 4, let's simplify that. So 4 over root e divided by 4. So this equals uh, 4 over root e times 1 fourth, right? So if you divide by 4, you're multiplying by 1 fourth. So 4 and 1 fourth cancel. So this is a 1 over root e, which is uh, 1 over e to the 1 half, which is e to the negative 1 half. Okay. So 4 over root e divided by 4 equals e to the negative 1 half. So this is 16 over e times natural log of e to the negative 1 half. And um, if you remember from pre-calculus, the properties log, stuff like that, natural log of e to a thing is just that thing. So this is 16 over e times negative one half. So 16 over e times negative one half is negative eight over e. Okay, because uh, you know negative sign here and then two and 16 cancel to make eight. So negative eight over e. So this is the actual value of the minimum. It's negative eight over e. So um, let's go ahead and make some room to write what the final answer is. I guess we'll do that over here. So our final answer is um, local min 
at, in this case, a z equals 4 over root e, Okumin at z equals 4 over root e, uh, is, we could say y or g, um, you know, it's, the function is called g, or it could be y coordinates, let's, you know, we could say y, is uh, y equals, um, we just found out over here was uh, negative 8 over e. Right, and uh, that's pretty much it, and there's no local max. Okay, so we just have the one local min here at 4 over root e, and we just found out that it's equal to negative 8 over e. So local min at 4 over root e is negative 8 over e, and there are no local maxes. And that's it for example 5 with the first derivative test.